in that other topic, we discussed how Penn State could beat Iowa. Now, let's shift over and discuss how Iowa could possibly shut out Penn State. Is that possible? Let's get into it. So, this is these I usually don't like to discuss who I think is going to win, who I think is going to lose exactly because I mean anything can happen. People tend to, you know, kind of jump on that. I like to discuss here though what the Hawkeyes need to do or what Penn State needs to do in order to win. And let's again look let's look at these uh, lineups here. So, looking at the lineup um you know, it's, it's going to be an intense duel, guys. It's going to be an intense duel, duel from top to bottom. And now, Iowa has won a lot of their matches at home uh, against Penn State. Two out of the last four home duels, they beat Penn State. Their last big, big win against Penn State was actually in 2008. They, they beat them in 2015. Uh, that was the last win against Penn State. However, the last big win by a big deficit, 27-13, to 13, was when Iowa won in 2008. That was one of their biggest deficits that they won. And they won four out of the last 10 duels. So, you know, it's it's obviously they are doing great this season as well as in past seasons, but they're on the revenge tour now. They just beat Ohio State. Now they're on to Penn State, and they're on a tear. So let's discuss what needs to happen. The first thing is, Getting into Spencer Lee, okay, Spencer Lee, obviously, is a guy who scored 100%, 100% bonus points this entire season. He's won every match by fall or tech fall, uh, except for one where he actually won by major decision. So every other match, he just absolutely crushed it. And because of that, let's say Spencer Lee gets the pin here. I mean, he's going to win by bonus is just by the stats, by how he's been looking this year. Moving on to 133. 133 is going to be an interesting match because, look, uh, DeSanto and RBY, they've wrestled in the past, and DeSanto has won twice. Going by those standards, going by the fact that DeSanto's won at Big Ten, she's won at Nationals against Roman Bravo Young, let's give DeSanto that victory, just going by nothing on the stat, uh, nothing but the facts. And like I said, anything could happen in these duels. Um, but l- anyways, leave a comment down below what you think is going to happen in this match and what you actually think is going to happen. Uh, Moving on to 141. This will be a good matchup with Nick Lee and Max Murin. Now, Murin and Lee have seen kind of the same uh, difficulty in competition, the same roughness in competition this entire season so far. Uh, Lee is 2-0 against Murin with a 92% bonus point percentage, which is just about as close to Spencer Lee as you can. Maybe it's because of the last name. Maybe Lee's... Maybe there's something up with Lee this season. I mean, really, we could see... Potentially three national champs with the last name Lee this year with Spencer Lee, Nick Lee, as well as Breton Lee at 149. Just saying. Uh, very possible. Now, uh, anyways, going with the fact that Nick Lee has beat Max Murin in the past, let's call that that it's going to happen again and give that win to Penn State. And that could be their win. Now, it could f- switch in the opposite direction, in which case, I would still be shutting out Penn State up to this point in the match. Moving on to Verclaren and Lugo at 149. Now, Verclaren and Lugo is going to be um, kind of an interesting match because by nothing more than the fact that Verclaren has never lost a match by greater than decision except for the times that he was pinned which is only twice uh one of them being last weekend against nebraska whenever clarence shot in i mean it was just a a bad pin getting caught getting stuck at that point last weekend now because of that i don't think that i mean lugo listen he has a chance to score some points on penn state uh possibly get a major possibly get some points on the board and because they're in their home arena at this point they're they know they need a win after a possible last loss to uh, Nick Lee. And the Hawkeyes are going to be rebounding here. Lugo is going to score some points. Let's let's call it that Lugo scores a major decision against Verclaren. And he's already had a win over O'Connor, although he did have a loss to Sasso last week. This could be very interesting indeed. But moving on to 157 with Caleb Young and Pfeiffer or Bergie. Now, Here's the thing. We could see Piper Russell, but we could also see Brady Berge. And we really don't know who we're going to see at this point. 
but we haven't seen Bergie wrestle all season. I think this is going to be, you know, Penn State knows what they're doing already, whether they're going to wrestle Bergie or not, who at that point in the season when he was taken out of the uh, lineup or taken out of the rankings, he was top seven in the country, whereas Young's number four right now. So, you know, if he wrestles, that would be a good match, but... Uh, I'm going to have to give this to Young, just going by the fact that Pfeiffer is 8-9 on the season right now. Well, Young has had some solid wins. But 165, the best match of the night. Number one versus number two, Chenzo versus The Bull. Who you got? Who do you think is going to win this match? Um, going by, like I said, going by the stats right now, Alex Marinelli has beat Vincenzo Joseph twice in the past. Although Vincenzo has placed higher than him at Nationals every single year consistently, Marinelli just finds a way to beat Vincenzo. Uh, the last time in the Big Ten Championships last year, really, I mean, Vincenzo went for those upper or overhooks and underhooks, and Marinelli just wasn't letting him get that. He wasn't letting him have it and kind of tossed Vincenzo and really handled him. I doubt we'll see him handle him that much in this match. Obviously, both of them have been working to beat the other, but um, with Marinelli coming off of wins against Wick, White, and McFadden, as well as Hartman, I mean, those have been some excellent wins this season, whereas Vincenzo, still undefeated on the season, um, just half the matches as Marinelli, actually, but he does have wins over White as well, as well as Shields. Um, but going by past history, we're going to give this victory to Marinelli. And at this point in the match, with the scores that I've been putting in, it's 18-3 to in favor of the Hawkeyes. So we're kind of close to that shutout. You know, Going back to that Nick Lee match, he needs a win uh, in order for Penn State not to get shut out. However, the one match that Penn State does really have going for them, I believe, is at 174 with Mark Hall against Michael Kemmer. Kemmer, of course, bumping up to 174 this year. And uh, we just haven't seen him wrestle against Mark Hall yet, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. Uh, Hall is coming off of a massive pin last week against Labriola, whereas Kemmer kind of had a close match with him. And because of that, I'm going to give this match just a decision to Mark Hall. Now, moving on to 184, let's talk about Assad and Brooks. Assad and Brooks. So, two true freshmen, and you know, we could see anybody come out here. We could see Brands come out. We could see Wilkie come out. We could even see like a, you know, maybe bumping up at 197 and Michael Beard come out for Penn State. You don't know what Kale has in his back pocket. You don't know what Tom Brands has in his back pocket. These guys have been up and down all year. Wilkie, of course, wrestled 197 last week against Ohio State, uh, whereas Warner did not wrestle. So, Anyways, at 184, number 8 Assad versus number 10 Brooks. Uh, this is a match I think can go either way. We've already seen Assad lose a couple times on the season, although he has had some excellent victories, uh, of course, including over Venz, whereas Brooks has had a loss to Venz. Going off of those common opponents, I'm going to have to give that match to Assad, making the hot pushing the Hawkeye score 21 to 6 and at 197 Rashid and Warner. Now, here's the unfortunate thing if you're a Penn State fan. Um Rashid is coming off of that shoulder injury. He's coming off of a hurt shoulder and a hurt, you know, past many many months. He's only this will be his fifth match of the year. Only his fifth match of the year whereas Warner's coming off of a pretty strong record. Um, I believe he's ten and three right now is his record. So he's just been wrestling better competition. Wins over Brucky, over Bruner of Purdue. Um, just been wrestling better. Whereas Rashid, I mean, let's look at last week. Rash- Shakur, unfortunately, like he was down in the third, and all he needed to do was shoot, and he wasn't even shooting. And that's one of the my biggest pet peeves is when you know you know you're down, you know you have to take a shot, you know you have to score. Why are you just not doing anything just blows my mind but anyway because of that i'm gonna have to give this decision to the higher ranked wrestler in jacob warner and that brings us to heavyweight with anthony cassiope versus seth nevels now we've seen this season so far cassiope has faced better competition his wins over trent hilger gannon grummel and matt stencil at midlands he's just been consistent every single match Interestingly enough, though, number 16, Seth Nevels, um, he is undefeated, but he doesn't have any real ranked wins this season. Doesn't mean anything. He's, you know, both these guys had solid redshirt years last year, and I'm sure that this will be a great match, Um, especially, you know, let's say that 
for whatever reason, it does come down to this final match, that will make it even more exciting. That means it uh, with with let's go with the higher wrestler here. Just for you know, for you Hawkeyes fans, let's go with the higher wrestler uh, here. And number three, Cassiope, making the score uh, by decision, making the score twenty-seven to three in favor uh, of the Hawkeyes. And of course, here in this graph, you can see you know Cassiope having a strong lift against uh, Traub in the Ohio State duel. But let's look at these final scores. Um, and 27-6, excuse me, 27-6 with Penn State's only two victories coming from Nick Lee and Mark Hall. Um, is this, what do you think? What do you think about these scores? Do you think they're correct? Do you think they're incorrect? Do you think I'm absolutely uh, crazy right now? Please, please let me know what you think in the comments below. <laughs>